As November winds down and winter approaches, temperatures continue to drop, and the thought of soon approaching snow and frigid weather is in the minds of many. In this video, we'll discuss how this winter season may be colder than initially thought and give you a comprehensive overview of the upcoming winter season, so let's get into it. Of course, before I get into the forecasts, we need to know what factors will be in play over the course of the winter. As we discussed in the last outlook, the biggest and most important of these is the ENSO, or El Niño Southern Oscillation. This has two main phases, El Niño and La Niña, which respectively feature warmer or cooler ocean temperatures in the Pacific Ocean. These phases have widespread impacts on the weather that America gets during every season, especially winter. For this winter season, we are still expected to be in the La Niña phase, though there have been trends saying we may actually go ENSO neutral, which I will discuss shortly. A majority of the models used to predict the ENSO phase say that we will likely see this neutral phase or weak La Niña during the winter months, which is seen as they dip just slightly below the zero line. However, as these models continue to run, more and more of them suggest we may be in the neutral phase instead, with now very few models that suggest anything below a weak La Niña. A typical wintertime La Niña pattern features colder and wetter conditions across much of the northern tier, focused especially in the northwest, and warmer but drier weather in much of the south, while in El Niño, the south is wet and cooler than normal, while the north may be dry and warmer than normal. The polar jet stream tends to be more variable and lurks further south during a La Niña, which can lead to more numerous and more severe cold outbreaks in America. As I discussed last video, this was seen recently in February of 2021 across much of the country, where a major cold blast sent temperatures more than 50 degrees below average in spots, breaking many weather records for more than 10 states. The cold also brought significant snowfall from the Sierra and Cascades to the Texas Gulf Coast to the northeast. We likely will not see another outbreak of cold this extreme during the upcoming winter, but a La Nina makes similar, weaker Arctic blasts more likely to happen. However, this neutral phase could throw a wrench in this expected La Nina pattern. Once again, the models have shifted slightly in favor of the neutral phase this winter, which would mean the polar jet stream would shift further east than in a La Nina, bringing the colder temperatures further toward the east coast than we previously expected, with the south staying warmer than average. If the trends continue to push more for a neutral phase, the northern and eastern U.S. could be much cooler than originally anticipated. Next, we'll get into what past winters can tell us about this upcoming season. Instead of going over the analogs for a La Nina winter this time, I'd like to show what we might expect in a neutral winter. The time frame goes from January to March, and as you can see, a vast majority of the northern, central, and eastern United States were cooler than average in such years, with warmer than average conditions in the southwest. This is a significantly cooler pattern for the east than what the La Nina analogs predict. Precipitation-wise, the Mid-South was the only area with a considerable signal for above-average precipitation, with everywhere else seeing at or below average conditions. Now, here is a map showing the average snowfall during specifically a weak La Nina winter. As can be seen, much of the northern tier tends to experience more snow than in a normal winter, especially so across the mountainous west, northern plains, and New England. Unfortunately for snow lovers in the southwest, Mid-South Appalachians, and Mid-Atlantic, these areas tend to see less snowfall than normal in a weak La Nina winter, especially so in the Mid-Atlantic. Lastly before the models, here is what the National Weather Service is forecasting for this winter. Unfortunately we don't have updated information from them since the last outlook, but it's still good to look at their forecasts. They say the Northwest has the best chance of seeing below average temperatures, while much of the South and East is likely to see warmer than average temps. They also call for wetter than normal conditions in the Northwest, Great Lakes, and Ohio Valley, and drier than average conditions across the southern U.S. Now, we'll get into the models. Starting off with the European model, it still forecasts warmer than average conditions across the entire U.S., with a chance of near normal temps in the far northern areas. A winter like this would feature much less snowfall than normal across nearly the entire country. Our next model is the CFS, or American model. It paints a similar picture to the Euro, with warmth across the nation, though some average to below average weather looks likely in the Northwest. It is worth noting that this area of below average temps in the Northwest was not there in the forecast run I showed in the last outlook. The Canadian model has not been updated since the previous outlook, but we'll still look at it. 
This model shows warmth in the southern two-thirds of the country but also gives the northern tier significantly below average temperatures, in some cases reaching a mean of 3 or 4 degrees below average for the season. Our last temperature model, the North American, is less bullish on the extreme temps, giving slightly above average to most of the country, though much like the CFS, more average to below average temps are pushing south with each new run. Moving now to precipitation, our CFS model gives a wet winter to some of the Northwest, Midwest, Ohio Valley, South, and Northeast, while giving a dry winter to the Southwest and Florida. Compared to last outlook, this run is much more indicative of a neutral pattern instead of a La Nina. The Canadian model is still bullish on giving a dry winter to nearly the entire country, except for a few spots in the Northern Rockies and Cascades. Lastly for the models, the North American is very similar to the CFS and hasn't changed much since last outlook, with above average precip in the Northwest and Ohio Valley, and below average precip in the Southern Tier. Finally, here are my thoughts on this winter season. Starting with temperatures, much of the southern two-thirds of the U.S. still looks to have a good chance of staying at or above average, with the greatest chance of warmer than normal temperatures being across the southwest. The best chance of below average temperatures will be across the northern tier, where the polar jet stream will stay fairly active throughout the winter. Noting the model changes, I have shifted this cooler than normal area further south and added a second tier of blue, meaning areas of that color could see temperatures up to 4 degrees below normal. In terms of precipitation, most of the southern tier still looks to stay drier than average, though the mid-south may see more rain than other areas just to their south. With an active polar jet and less active subtropical jet, storms will tend to go north of these areas, leading to less rainfall than normal. The northwest, Ohio Valley, and northern New England look to have the best chance of seeing above normal precipitation. Once again, an active polar jet stream tends to bring many storms into this area, leading to increased rainfall probabilities and heavy mountain snow. There also looks to be an increased likelihood of strong storms that track across the Great Lakes this winter, which would bring considerable rain and snow to the Ohio Valley and Northeast. Moving on to snowfall, this is the map that has changed the most. The Northwest still looks to have the best chance of above average snowfall, with a frequent storm track and near to slightly below average temperatures. The Cascades and Northern Rockies may do especially well this winter, assuming nothing major changes in the outlook. The Northern Great Lakes, Northern Plains, and New England all have decent chances at above normal snowfall as well, with an active storm track and average to below average temps. From the last outlook, I've shifted this above average area further south to include more of the areas south of the lakes, and added a well above category for the Northern Great Lakes. The lake effect snow regions of New York may also see a few major events early in the season if conditions play out, so keep an eye out there. Now, unfortunately for snow lovers in the Mid-Atlantic, Appalachians, Southwest, and Southern Plains, conditions still don't look favorable for these areas to see a lot of snowfall this year, with warm temperatures and an unfavorable storm track leading to more rain than snow in the Mid-Atlantic and Southern Plains, and multiple dry spells in the Southwest. Of course, this does not mean you won't see any snow, but your chances of seeing average or above average snowfall is lower than in a normal year. Last but not least, here is my updated outlook for the upcoming winter season. Starting off in the northwest, this area still looks to stay very wet and snowy during the winter. With active polar and Pacific jet streams, frequent storms will pummel this region, leading to above average precipitation in many places. The Northern Plains and Great Lakes have the best chance of seeing brutal cold and above average snowfall this year, and it should be noted that this area has also moved south. The active polar jet will bring frequent clippers, lake effect snow events, and arctic blasts to this region, with a few warmer and drier spells in between. The gray area in the Midwest and Ohio Valley has equal chances of being warmer, drier, cooler, or wetter this winter. This zone will be sandwiched between the cold conditions to the north and the warm and dry conditions to the south, so you'll see your fair share of both. Much of New England looks to be snowier than average, with slightly below average temperatures and a somewhat active storm track. The lake effect regions could also see a few major events this winter, especially early in the season. Of course, if northern New England sees a lot of snow, southern New England and the northeast will get action too, though it still looks to be more rain than snow. Frequent clippers and Great Lakes cutters should bring a lot of precipitation to this area, though it won't all be snow. Unfortunately for the Mid-Atlantic, 
mild temps and an unfavorable storm track look to bring considerably less snowfall than average this winter. Of course, one moderate strength storm in some of these areas is enough to break above average, but overall, snowfall looks to be limited in these areas. A majority of the Mid-South and Central Plains will be warmer than average this winter, with likely less snowfall than average but more ice or mixing events. If just enough cold air can sink into this region, there is the possibility for significant ice or sleet storms. Lastly, a vast majority of the southern tier will stay warmer and drier than average this winter, especially so in the southern southwest and southeast. With the last bout of tropically influenced rain expected in late November, the southeast will likely dry back out for the winter, and the southwest will see less storms than normal during the winter. Thanks for watching. We've had some significant changes in the outlook compared to last time, so tell me in the comments if you're excited. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe, and please leave any feedback in the comments below, or tell me the city where you live, and I'll give an outlook for your area specifically. Thanks again, and look forward to my official winter forecast and December outlook in the coming weeks.